I'm uh, Dr. Kim. I'm one of the radiologists at uh, Howard uh, University Hospital, and we're going to discuss uh, looking at the thoracic spine. So this is a patient uh, who came in for evaluation for back pain, and the first image you'll see is a scout image, and uh, you'll see that this is the thoracic spine, obviously, just a little minimal uh, curvature here, a little minimal scoliosis uh, in the mid to lower thoracic spine. But otherwise, everything else uh, looks fine. And I don't usually spend too much time. So most of the work will be done looking at the sagittal uh, images. So I'll pull that down. And I'm scrolling now to get to the midline. And so we're at midline now. And I'm going to change the bones to the bone windows. Uh, so pain, back pain, can be caused by any number of things. Uh, for simplicity, I'm going to just divide it arbitrarily into three categories, trauma, infection, and tumor. And I'll say sort of a few key points for, for each type of uh, cause of back pain. But before we discuss that, uh, let's just do the general overview of the spine. So if you look along the border of the anterior margins of the vertebral bodies, if you follow that down, that should be aligned properly, and every vertebral body should line up uh, with the next one. This is uh, created by the anterior longitudinal ligament, which gives support uh, to the spine. Also, on the posterior aspects of the vertebral bodies, it should also line up nicely, as in this patient, as you go down from one vertebral body to the next. And this is created by the, the posterior longitudinal ligament. You're going to go scroll a little bit to the sides. At this point, you're going to see a couple structures. One is you'll see the facet joint. So at the top here, this is the vertebral body, this is a pedicle, and then so extending to the articular facet. And just below it is the next vertebral body, obviously, pedicle again, and then this is the articular facet. So where these articular facets meet is obviously your facet joint. So this is your facet joint along here. And you'll see one at every level. So there's another facet joint here, another facet joint here, another one here, one more down here, and so forth down the thoracic spine. The other structure that you'll see nicely parasagittal spine is your neural foramina where your nerve roots exit the central canal. So here is a neural frame in here, and neural root, nerve root is exiting at this uh, location here. And then you'll see, so there's one nerve root, uh, one neural foramina, and then here, there's one more neural frame in here, another neural frame in, one more neural frame in, and so forth down the thoracic spine. And they are all normal in this patient. One more thing that you'll see is that you'll see posterior to the spinal canal is your spinous process. So these, there's a spinous process here, spinous process here. At each level, you'll see spinous process. Okay. Right, so that's just a kind of general anatomic bony overview. So in trauma, uh, and the first thing you're going to uh, look at is uh, for compression fractures. So you uh, make sure that the vertebral body heights are, are normal. So the vertebral body heights should be the same or slightly larger as you go down each level on the thoracic spine, and they are normal here in this patient. The next thing we're going to look at is alignment, which we just discussed earlier is uh, maintained by the anterior and posterior longitudinal ligaments. So the vertebral bodies should line up nicely from one vertebral body to the next along the anterior margin and along the posterior margin. In trauma, you can also look for spinous process fractures. So you look back here in the spinous processes for any spinous process fractures. Then we can move parasagittal, okay, a little off midline. And we look at the facet joint. So I'm gonna, let's just focus on this facet joint here. If you have severe trauma, this uh, articular facet will actually dislocate and can perch on top of the one below it, or can even actually go completely go all the way across. 
So that's important to know. Trauma can also disrupt or compromise the neural foramen right here. So we'll carefully look at those at each level. Okay, and that's uh, the main bony findings that you would look for. We can switch now to the soft tissues because your spine isn't just composed of bone. Uh, it's composed of also the central canal, okay, which is going to be this kind of uh, uh, gray region between the vertebral body and the posterior elements. So this is the central canal here. Let's follow the arrow here along the th thoracic spine. And it's not, you can't see it too well, but you can sort of see that there is a spinal cord here in the middle of this gray space. In trauma, you can, uh, the main thing you want to look for is cord compression. So cord compression can be caused by a number of things. One is uh, disc, a traumatic disc herniation. So this is a vertebral body. Vertebral body in between is your intervertebral disc. So you gotta look at the posterior aspect of it and to make sure that there's no bulging of that disc into the central canal causing cord compression. So here's that area here, another, another potential area here, and so forth down the thoracic spine. And in this patient, these are all normal. There's no disc herniation. Another thing to look for is uh, uh, if you have a compression fracture, if you have a fracture of a vertebral body, then uh, you're not going to have this nice uh, sharp margin posteriorly anymore. You're going to have uh, fracture components and bony retropulsion from the fracture back into the spinal canal. And, and that can cause cord uh, compression and central canal compromise. Finally, uh, you can have uh, uh, an, a hematoma, or, uh, uh, which forms in the epidural space. Uh, so epidural uh, hematomas uh, will occur, can occur either anteriorly or in, posteriorly. Uh, in the epidural space, and if it's large enough, uh, the epidural hematoma can cause cord compression.